what a long journey life is. Have you ever uh, said that uh, any time in your life when you feel like you're tired, you feel like you're you have lost your you have lost your sanity, and uh, you felt impatient that uh, well, why is life like this? You know, it's so long. Like it's 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 hard to go through this. You know what? Yeah, this is a legitimate response. You know, when I was a uh, when I was a young kid before, uh, I have a different view of life. I thought life was always all about you know playing outside, playing what you want, playing video games. You know, uh, just your own pleasures. You know, I had that kind of um, view of life before, where it, it's life is fun, life is happiness, and I can imagine myself. You know always uh, playing dodgeball with my friends outside or maybe it's going to vacation in a, in a province with my family and swimming. Yeah, there are those moments. But the moment I grew up, I found out that life is even harder. And judging by the experience I'm doing right now, I'm studying and you feel you, there's a much more gravity right now in the contrary. Uh, the challenges are even harder, the questions are even deeper, and it seems that the wonder is shrinking. Charles Brokowski, uh, in his book, Factotum, he said these words, If you're going to try, go all the way. Otherwise, don't even start. This could mean losing girlfriends, wives, relatives, and maybe even your mind. It could mean not eating for three or four days. It could mean freezing on a, park, on a park bench. It could mean jail. It could mean derision. It could mean mockery, isolation. Isolation is the gift. All the others are a test of your endurance. Others are just a test of your endurance, of how much you really want to do it. And you'll do it. Despite rejection and the worst odds, and it will be better than anything else you can imagine. If you're going to try, go all the way. There's no other feeling like that. You will be alone with the gods and the nights will flame with fire. You will ride life straight to perfect laughter. It's the only good fight there is. What an amazing uh, quote this is. It, it's reality. It describes what life is. Yes, there are times where you have the wonder. You have the fun. But there are also times you have the depression. You have the insanity. You have the depression. You see, life is like a journey. Among all illustrations, the perfect illustration is life is a journey. We view life as a journey. And that journey is full of ups and downs, trials and fun, curses and blessings, goods and bads. Life doesn't give us everything we desire, nor everything that makes us happy. Sometimes it gives us the worst of all things. And the most painful of things, life is full of lessons full of learnings, full of important facets of eternity and impermanence, and we ponder them for a lifetime. Life is full of challenges, problems, pain, suffering, but it does, but it does not mean the whole life consists of, of these negative descriptions or characteristics. In other words, life is full of both of these that make life good and bad. So life cannot be divine, defined in just one word nor a sentence. This is the reason why life is good to be described as a journey. You see, a journey is full of obstacles, challenges, trials. It's a long journey. It is easier to begin a journey than to finish a journey. And a journey cannot be finished when there is no commitment. Commitment requires joy, understanding, patience, humility, and the like. Yes, these values are unique in the journey only when we have the willingness to apply them. One of the widely considered the most distinguished Greek poet of the 20th century is Constantine Gavafi. Constantine Gavafi wrote an amazing poem about life. The title of the poem is Ithaca. It goes like this. As you set out for Ithaca, hope your road is a long one, full of adventure, full of discovery, Lystrigonians, Cyclops, angry Poseidon, don't be afraid of them. You'll never find things like that on your way. 
As long as you keep your thoughts raised high, as long as a rare excitement stirs your spirit and your body, Lystrigonians, Cyclops, Wild Poseidon, you won't encounter them. Unless you bring them along inside your soul. Unless your soul sets them up in front of you. Now the last stanza explained really well that considering the joy along the journey brings wisdom and excitement in facing storms. He continued and he wrote this, Keep Ithaca always in your mind. Arriving there is what you're destined for. But don't hurry the journey at all. Better if it lasts for years. So you're old by the time you reach the island, wealthy with all you've gained on the way, not expecting Ithaca to make you rich. Ithaca, Ithaca gave you the marvelous journey. Without her, you would not have set out. She has nothing left to give you now. And if you find her poor, Ithaca won't have fooled you. Wise as you will have become so full of experience. You will have understood by then what these Ithacas mean. See, you see, the Ithaca, the word Ithaca, that is frequently written in the poem, does not only refer to the finish line of life, nor destiny of life. It also refers to the journey itself, the wisdom along the journey, the kind of joy that makes you enjoy the long journey, despite of trials, problems, and challenges. Ithaca is not only a destiny, it is a valuable, pur valuable purpose you have along the journey. Three rules to consider here. Number one, keep asking questions. Number two, enjoy seeking answers. And lastly, commit. But wait, we have forgot the fourth rule, and that is enjoy. Enjoy your journey in the presence of your maker. Enjoy it with, with your maker, who is your all in all. Thus, life is not only good or bad. It is a journey with the culmination of all of these to, that, that mold humanity to the right values towards the truth and love of life. The main question in my mind is this. Are we willing to continue the journey? What more if we are running the, this race for the one who created life and the one who redeemed that life for, finishing of, for the finishing of this race? When life is a journey, purpose is the pursuit of life. We always want to find meaning in what we do in life. It's true. Managing a business, whether it's in enjoying with family, whether it's in work, whether it's in gaming, studying, hanging out with friends, or even simply resting, or even when you're all alone in your room, reflecting. We want life to be meaningful, whether we like it or not. But, but two follow-up questions arise. What is the ultimate purpose of humanity? Why is it that absolute satisfaction is difficult to attain? Thus, life here is nothing compared to life beyond it would seem that we long for eternity. Now, this is where the gospel comes in. Jesus Christ, who is the gospel itself, is that ultimate purpose and eternity because all that we need beyond this world are in him. He is the embodiment of our real world, of our, sorry, of our, of our real need. He gives us the absolute satisfaction and salvation from this unending cycle of self-seeking. As a loving father, he cares for us, he transforms us, and he comf comforts us in times of trouble, especially in times of despair and heaviness of life. He is our eternal hope and destiny, and he will be with him, and we will be with him when the time comes. You see, the comforting beauty, the secured veracity, the unconditional love, and abundant grace of the gospel is such a unique thing for us that if we begin to surrender ourselves to him, who is the gospel itself, Jesus Christ, oh, how great it will be. The hymn writer, George Matheson, wrote this hymn on the eve of his sister's wedding and the sad memory of the woman he was once engaged to years before until, until she learned he was, going, he was going blind. This is what George Matheson said. Oh, love that will not let me go. I rest my weary soul in thee. I give thee back the life I owe, that in thine ocean depths its flow may richer fully be. 
Oh joy that seeketh me through pain. I cannot close my heart in thee. I chase the rainbow through the through the rain and feel the promise is not vain. That morn shall tearless be. O cross that lifteth up my head, I dare not ask to fly from thee. I lay in dust, life's glory dead, and from the ground there blossoms red, life that shall endless be. That's what George Matheson wrote. Uh, the poem that George Matheson wrote, knowing that his wife will go blind. What an amazing poem that he expressed that there's still meaning, even though the challenges, no matter how fearful or no matter how difficult will be, there's still joy, there's still love, and above all, there's still Jesus, the cross. Thankfully, our disappointments matter to God. The shepherd of our souls will put it all together and will give us eternity to revel in the marvel of what God has done. See, you see, our Father holds the threads of the design. And I'm so immensely grateful that he's our grand weaver. Now, I want to end with this wonderful poem by Annie Johnston Flint. She wrote a poem called One Day at a Time. I want you viewers, I want you viewers to listen to this very wonderful poem. It goes like this. One day at a time, with its failures and fears, with its hurts and mistakes, with its weakness and tears, with its portion of pain and its burden of care. One day at a time, we must meet and must bear. One day at a time, to be patient and strong, to be calm under trial and sweet under wrong. Then its toiling shall pass and its sorrow shall cease. It shall darken and die and the night shall bring peace. One day at a time, but the day is so long and the heart is not brave and the soul is not strong. O thou pitiful Christ, be thou near all the way. Give courage and patience and strength for the day. Swift cometh his answer, so clear and so sweet. Yea, yes, I will be with thee, thy troubles to meet. I will not forget thee, nor fail thee, nor grieve. I will not forsake thee, I, will, I never will live. Not yesterday's load we are, we are called on to bear, nor the morrow's uncertain and shadowy care. Why should we look forward or back with dismay? Our needs as our mercies are but for the day. One day at a time, and the day is his day. He hath numbered its hours, though they haste or delay. His grace is sufficient, we walk not alone. As the day, so the strength that he giveth his own. What a wonderful point that was. Jesus is your purpose. And Jesus will bring meaning to your journey in life. He is the journey itself in your life. We all need him more than ever. Seek him more and find him. Find real purpose in your journey in life. And this is one of many more ways to live an examined life. Thank you. God bless.